Gentlemen, what is going on today? My name is Ryan Mickler. I am the host and the founder of this movement and the Order of Man podcast. Hey, good news for you guys today. Uh, we just had our highest download month ever. So it's pretty cool to see the Order of Man movement continue to grow. And that's a testament to you and what you want to hear. And not only that, but the power of the people that we've had coming on. We had Jason Wilson. We had Ben Shapiro. Uh, we had Den Crenshaw. Over the past several weeks, we've got Jesse Itzler coming up. Uh, we've had Tim Kennedy and John Eldridge and Dakota Meyer and Andy Priscilla and Jocko Willink and David Goggins. Guys, like what can I say? The lineup of guys that we've had on over the past uh, years and over the past month or so has been absolutely incredible. And again, I want to just tell you that's a testament to you and thank you for believing in the mission to reclaim and restore masculinity which is if, if you're new, that's what this podcast is all about. I want to give you the tools and the conversations and resources you need to thrive as men and, uh, and to step up within your families, your businesses, your communities. We've got a new book coming out in 2022 because I'm going to be calling upon you. Uh, and and man, we just got a lot going on. We've got a lot going on and it's all good stuff. Uh, and one of the things that I wanted to talk with you about today is in relation to what I just told you. And that's this pivot that I've made over the past 12 months from what I would say successful amateur to novice professional. I'm going to talk about the mindsets and the strategies and some things that you can do. I've got five things in particular that you can incorporate into your own, uh, maybe it's a hobby, your business, your practice, whatever, uh, that will help you move and make that transition from successful amateur to professional, or excuse me, novice professional. Uh, before I do, just let me mention my friends and uh, sponsors of this podcast over at Origin Maine. If you guys want some great denim, you want some great jeans, you want a belt, you want a wallet, you want a gi, you want a rash guard, you want their supplemental lineup, I take their Joint Warfare, their Cold War, and their Super Krill. Uh, if you want those nutritional supplements in addition to their Mulk and their, their Go, which is their Cognitive Enhancing Drink, then go to originmain.com. And what I would tell you right now is we start to cool off and it's getting a little cool in Maine. You want to check out one, their boots. I, I personally have uh, their bison boot. I also like the Lincoln boot. And then two, you're going to want to check out their heavy hoodie. Uh, I'm not going to get into all the details, but they've got some proprietary weaving and features that I think you guys are going to be interested in, especially if you're in the cold weather, like Maine or Minnesota or Idaho or Maine, or I think I said Maine, Montana, wherever you're going to want to check out their boots and their heavy hoodie, originmain.com. Use the code order, O-R-D-E-R at checkout. All right, guys, let's get into this move that I made over the past 12 months from successful amateur to a novice professional on, on the surface, it might not feel like or seem like there's a big difference between successful amateur or novice professional, uh, but I have made that pivot. I had made that switch uh, because I decided to, frankly. I decided that I don't want to play this small, that I wanted to go all in, that I wanted to commit fully, that I wanted to make a bunch of money, that I wanted to impact a bunch of people. And there's some mindsets and strategies that I've employed in the past 12 months that have allowed me to do this. So let's talk about this and I'm gonna break one down each individually. Number one, uh, I move from successful amateur who dabbles or it dabbles to being committed. And that's the mindset shift that you need to first and foremost make. If you're dabbling, let me say this, by the way, too. It's okay to be a successful amateur. That's 100% okay. There's nothing wrong with that. You're not inferior. You're not a loser. I don't think less of you uh, than those who are novice professionals or even professional professionals. I, I don't, I don't think less of you. It's just a matter of motives. What do you want? And if you want to take pictures of your family and friends and do some senior pictures here and there on the weekends, uh, and you're a successful amateur and, and you're good with that, all the power to you. I love it. I have no problem with that. So let me just tell you first and foremost, if you're a successful amateur, I'm not telling you you're inferior. I'm not telling you you're wrong. I'm just saying if you want to make the pivot, the switch from an amateur over to a professional, then these are the things that are going to help you. And one of the primary differences is that an amateur dabbles. You know, they do things on the weekend. They do things here and there when things pop up and they kind of, you know, they've got another job perhaps, or they've got other occupations and other hobbies and interests and activities. And so when they can, they do 
photography or blogging or videos or painting or whatever. Uh, and again, there's nothing wrong with that. But a professional is not a dabbler. A professional doesn't dabble in this stuff. So it, it might take you some time. It's not going to happen overnight. Uh, maybe you're taking pictures. Maybe you started a blog. Maybe you started a podcast. Maybe you've started a clothing company. It could be an infinite number of things. And right now you're working a full-time job somewhere else and you're doing this on the side because that's what has to happen. That's where I was with Order of Man. I had my financial planning practice and I was doing that and I was fully invested in that. Uh, and, and, and it was good. And about four or five years ago, I made the decision to take this thing full time uh, because that was my decision. That was a decision that I wanted to make. And so I sold my financial planning practice and I stopped dabbling. And instead of dabbling in things that were interesting to me, I went all in 100%. I didn't burn boats. I didn't burn bridges. None of this like alpha talk that a lot of, a lot of guys talk about. Uh, I did this very strategically, but I became committed. And the question is, if you want to become a novice professional, are you committed or are you dabbling? Period. Bottom line. We can get into the details from there, but ask yourself, honestly, are you a dabbler? Mm, this sounds interesting. I'll try that. That sounds interesting. I'll try that. Oh, I'll do this two days a week and I'll do this three days a week. Or are you fully committed? Are you all in? Have you invested? Have you put money towards this thing? Have you, have you sold other businesses? Have you gone all in? That's a mindset shift. And only you can determine what that is. But once you do, you're going to make that pivot and that move from amateur to professional. Number two, uh, successful amateurs and just amateurs in general, they do things for fun. And the minute that it loses its fun or its appeal or its, its enjoyment, then they throw in the towel. So you might be doing something like painting or, or, or taking photography uh, or some sort of artistic endeavor or playing music or having a blog or having this or having that or build, building something. Maybe you're really good with hand, your hands and you're good with uh, working with wood. Okay, that's fun. That's enjoyable. And again, guys, there's nothing wrong with it. I remember years and years ago, I built this standing garden box for, for my wife. She said, I want this garden box. Here's something I saw on Pinterest. And can you make this? And I said, well, yeah, let me try. And so I made this and I actually enjoyed the process. I made this garden box and it wasn't very big and I made it for her and she was happy and I was happy and she was growing her, her garden, part of her garden out of it. And there was a lot of fulfillment and joy and, and satisfaction and happiness in this. And then I had a neighbor come to me and, I, and she said, hey, uh, I saw that you, grew, you, you built that garden box. Can you build one for me? And I politely declined because I didn't want to make it a, a job. Like I didn't want to get paid for it because that would have zapped the fun from it. The same thing with boat building. A lot of you guys know my son and I uh, have been building a boat. I, I don't build boats professionally. I do it with my son because it's enjoyable. It's fun. Like there's no motive outside of that. I don't have any plans to make money. I don't have plans to sell the boat. I don't have plans to add a bunch of value to other people's lives. I just like the process of boat building. I like the process of spending time with my kid and having lessons and being able to communicate and laugh and joke and tease and play with each other. That, that, and that's, that's an amateur. I'm, I'm an amateur in boat building and I'm okay with that. It's not bad. I'm completely okay with that. But on the other hand, if I wanted to become a professional, okay, well, now I got to move from the making, or excuse me, having fun realm to the making money realm. And that's a very big leap, guys. A lot of people, I talked with somebody in my own personal life just in the last couple of days uh, who had a very hard time shifting their mindset from, I just want to help people to, I want to make money. Guys, professionals make money. And by the way, it isn't at odds with helping people. Just because you're making money doesn't mean you're not helping people. You are. You are. We've helped millions and millions of men across the planet. And also I make a very lucrative living. That's actually the beauty of what I do is that I can make a great income. I can provide for my family and we can have food and a house over our head and we can have experiences. And also I can serve people. So wrap your head around that guys. And if you want to make the transition uh, to a professional, you got to sell something. If I wanted to be a professional boat builder, you know when I become a professional boat builder? When I sell my first boat. That's it. When I make a boat and I sell it for however much it sells for, I sell it. That's when I become a professional. 
because professionals make money. And if you aren't making money yet in your podcast or your photography business or your blog business or your boat building business or your, your, your carpentry business or whatever, then you're just an amateur. And, and I say just. Again, it's not just. If it's by design, it's okay. If you're like, you know, Ryan, I just like to build furniture on the weekends. Cool. All the power to you. You're just an, you're an amateur and that's fine. That's a great. But if you're listening to this podcast, and I know a lot of you guys are because you sent me messages about a post I made on Instagram at Ryan Mickler, by the way. And you said, Ryan, can you explain to me some of the steps you made that transitioned you from successful amateur to novice professional? This is what I did. I sold something in 2015, the end of 2015, I sold our first membership to the Iron Council. It was a hundred bucks. It was a 12 week course. I sold our first membership and then I sold 11 more in addition to that. And about eight weeks into this 12 week course, a bunch of guys are like, what's next? What's next? What do we do? What, 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 where do we go from here? And I opened up and now we have over 900 members of the Iron Council. But that's because I decided at some point five years ago, almost six, well, closer to six years now, I made the pivot from amateur, just dabbling in this thing, to now becoming a professional, which means I sell something. I give you value, which is the Iron Council or a hat or a shirt or a product or whatever, information, coaching, event, et cetera, an experience. And then you, in exchange, pay me for that. That's what makes a professional, a professional. Number three, organic versus strategic. A lot of amateurs will actually make, have businesses. They'll make a little money. They'll, they'll have a little cash. They'll have an influx of cash. People will pay them periodically. An amateur can do that. So I just told you that you go professional when you make money, only if you're deliberate. It isn't a certain amount of money. There's no, there's no metric or benchmark for it. It's only if you're deliberate. Because look, I mean, I could do a thousand different things, an infinite number of things where I can make a few dollars here and there. And what I've noticed that amateurs will do is they'll gradually allow their business to grow or their project or their hobby to grow organically. And again, let me reiterate, there's nothing wrong with that if that's your motive. But if your motive is to make this thing big, then you need to start being a little bit more strategic about it. All right, how are you going to grow the business? How are you going to reach new people? What's your messaging going to be? What's your marketing going to be? Um, how are you going to pick up new clientele? What's the process that you're going to go through? And, and what is it that you're going to sell? What is your offering? What is your unique value proposition for these individuals? It's very strategic. It's deliberate. It's intentional. I've seen a lot of successful amateurs uh, who grow businesses and they make some money here and there. And then they fade out, they fizzle out because they stumbled across something that worked out really, really well, but they never made the pivot from just organic growth, which might be that one of your videos one day randomly goes viral. Okay. That wasn't strategic. It randomly happened. Nothing wrong with it. It's great. I'll take it. But unless you can learn to elevate it to the strategic level, you're not going to be able to capitalize on it. If one of my videos or podcasts goes viral, for example, and it reaches, let's say, 2 million people, but I don't have any system in place for capturing their information, capturing their data, getting them to buy a shirt or a hat, getting them to sign up for the Iron Council, getting them to come to one of our events, then I'm just being amateur. I'm just dabbling. And it's just organic growth and whatever happens, happens. And I've, had, I, I've talked with very successful people friends, people in my circles who are organic growth and, and they've got other businesses, they've got other jobs and I, I wish them all the best. They're just not ready to take it to the next level. When you are, you're going to start being more strategic about it. So if you're thinking to yourself, well, Ryan, I want to take this photography business uh, to the next level, then you have to sit down and you have to spend time thinking about what is your messaging? What is your branding? What is your logo? What is your company name? Who's going to help you with your taxes? Uh, how are you going to grow your business? How much does it cost to get a new client? Once you get a new client, what's the process they go through in order to become onboarded as a client? This is what professionals do. They start thinking about strategically what they need to do to move somebody from they're not familiar with you at all to now they're 
a, a, a rabid fan and, and customer. Fan is not enough. Customer, meaning they're paying you for some sort of service, good, or product. Strategic versus organic. Number four, uh, amateurs are looking for minimal investment versus professionals who are looking for maximum investment. So let's go back to the photography business. An amateur, what they would say is, I want the best camera, but I want to pay as little as possible. That's what an amateur is going to do. I want the very best camera that money can buy, which means like, I don't want to spend as much as I have to. And I'm trying to find and wrestle with, okay, like what is good, what is valuable versus what is cost effective. Okay. A professional is looking for maximum investment. So here's the clientele I want to reach. Here's the type of people. Here's the type of shots I want to take. Here's my, uh, my subject matter, whether it's landscape or animal life or people or weddings or back to school pictures or graduation pictures or family pictures or whatever. Okay. Now, how can I invest as much as I possibly can in order to maximize this business? So the other day, my wife and I were having a conversation because we just got wrapped up with uh, our legacy event, which is a father-son event. And we've got on the pack of that, we've got our main event, which is an event for a hundred men coming to Maine, our property here in Maine. And we're going to enjoy each other's company and have a great time. And uh, there's, there's these Dutch ovens that we want. If you guys are familiar with Dutch ovens, uh, it's a cast iron oven that you cook on coals. You put coals under, you put coals on top. And my brother-in-law and my father-in-law who are amazing at, at this form of cooking are going to come out and cook meatloaf for us. They're going to cook peach, peach cobbler for us. Uh, and so my brother-in-law said, Hey, you know, like if you want us to come out, we will, you're going to have to pay for us to come out. We're going to cover their flights. I'm going to kick them a little money because they're investing their time with me. Uh, and then you need to buy this. And those Dutch ovens, I, I want to say we just bought them and it ended up being like 1800 or $2,000. And my wife said, Hey, I found the Dutch ovens. Here's how much all of them are going to cost. Here's what we need. Six years ago, I would have said, well, you know, can we get by with half of it? Uh, can we, can we look at another brand that maybe isn't as good, but we'll produce the same result. That's what an amateur would say. Okay. But a professional would say, do it. No question, no hesitation. And because I made the pivot from amateur to professional, I, when my wife told me how much it would be, I, I said, do it. And she said, well, I don't know. That's a lot of money. And I said, well, it's a lot of money just like to pay. But if you figure on one event based on what we got, cause I did the math because I'm a professional. So I actually look at this stuff. I said, that's like 16 bucks a person. These guys are paying 500 bucks to come out here. That's a drop in the bucket. And I said, and we use those same Dutch ovens over a 10 different events. It's like a dollar 60 per person per event. That's a, that's, that's, that's a no brainer. We should do that. And so you might have to pay more upfront, but you start looking at it strategically to go back to my last point, and you look at it on a bigger scale, and now you're thinking, hey, if I can spend $1.60 per person, and it's going to yield $3 or $5 or $10 or $100, how often would you do that? Well, you do that forever, right? You would do that as much as, as many uh, $1.60s as you had, right? That, that's, what, that's how a professional thinks. A novice is like, oh man, I don't know. Like it's a lot, I got to pay $1,600 for this. And uh, I don't know if that's going to be good. And is it going to make any money? And uh, can we do it for, for $1,200? Maybe you could, but it would be inferior to what you can do for investing maximum. So if you're an amateur, you're going to look for skimping. You're going to look for cost reduction, cost savings. And that is your biggest motivating factor. Like, how can you do it the cheapest? But a professional is how can I add the most value? So I'm still looking for cost savings, but value is the metric, right? So I, I, if I'm going to spend 1600 bucks, I need to make sure that I'm going to get at least that 1600 bucks. It's, it's like the difference between price and cost. If you're watching this video on YouTube, which you can do at order of man, uh, youtube.com slash order of man. So I've got this pen right here. Okay. And this pen, maybe it cost me 50 cents for this pen. Okay, well, the, the price tag, the price of this pen 
is 50 cents. That's the price. But the cost is different. There's a difference between price and cost. The price is 50 cents. But if I use this to write the draft of my new book coming out next year, and it yields a hundred, two hundred, five hundred thousand dollars. The price tag was fifty cents, but the cost of this pen was was actually negative, right? Like I made money. This was not just a pen that cost me fifty cents. This was an investment in my future, and that's how professionals look at it. When I buy a computer, or I buy a microphone, or I buy a camera or I invest in traveling to somebody else to have them on the podcast. Yeah, there's a price tag of getting the airline ticket, but the cost is in my favor. I can go visit Jesse Itzler or Jason Wilson uh, or Madison Cawthorn or Dan Crenshaw, these men that I've had on the podcast. And yeah, there's a price tag for sure. But the cost is significantly lower because I'm going to yield a better return. That's how professionals view it. And then the fifth point right here is that I, I believe that being an amateur is more of a self-serving motive. And, and again, I'm not saying this is bad, but if you think to yourself, well, Ryan, you know, I just like to dabble and take pictures on the weekend. Think about even that phrase. I like to, I, I just like to do it. It's just, it's just kind of fun. Those are all selfish driven motives. They're not bad. And it's okay at times to be selfish. Like I like building a canoe. Maybe you like taking pictures. Maybe you like playing the guitar. Maybe you like the working with wood. Maybe you like building websites. There's things that you like, and it's okay to like those things, but it's self-serving. I like doing this, therefore I do it. I feel good. It makes me happy, and that's why I do it. That's what an amateur would say, and it's okay. But a professional, I think, comes from the perspective of serving others. Yeah, I, I still want to like what I do. So with Order of Man, I like doing this. I like podcasting. I like talking with people. But also, I want to make sure people are being served. I want to make sure that I'm adding value to other people's lives. I want to see men lead and thrive and inspire their family and their business members and their community and their neighbors. And so instead of being a self-serving approach, which isn't always bad. It has a negative connotation, but it isn't always bad. When you become a professional, you start moving into the service of others, right? When that, when that uh, neighbor of mine reached out and said, Hey, Ryan, can you make this for me? This, this uh, grow box for my vegetables. And I said, no, it's because I enjoy doing it for myself. And I didn't want to make it about other people. I, I just wanted it to be about myself. And again, there's times where that's okay. If I would have said, yeah, I, I would love to do that. And, um, you know, here's how much the material costs. Here's how much I time it costs for me to do it. So, you know, it's going to be a thousand bucks or whatever. And I would have said that. Then it moves into serving other people. Like I want her to win. I want her to have something. Uh, I want to build her home. I want to take their wedding pictures. Uh, I, I want to build their website. I want to do this consulting. And it becomes about serving other people. Now, granted, it still could be enjoyable to you. They're not mutually exclusive. But the primary motivating factor is that you want to serve other people. That's when you move from amateur to not, uh, excuse me, to professional. So that's it, guys. I know those are broad generalities, but I, I can't talk to you guys about the specifics the intricacies or the nuances, because I don't know what it is you're trying to do. But I think if you take these five tips and these five points and you really ask yourself, you know, get out a piece of paper and write these down and ask yourself, honestly, where do you fall and what's important to you? And what do you value? And what do you want to accomplish? Then you're going to see whether or not you want to stay in the amateur realm, which is completely acceptable if that's what you're after. Or you might say, no, Ryan, I want to turn this into a business. I want to become a professional. I want to make lots of money. I want to serve my family. I want to serve my neighbors. I want to serve my clients. Then this is what you would do. Let's recap. Number one, either you're going to dabble as an amateur or you're fully committed. You're all into this thing. That's a mindset shift. Number two, are you doing this for fun? And if it's just for fun and enjoyment, be an amateur. There's things I'm an amateur. I'm an amateur boat builder. I'm not a professional because I don't sell them. I'm an amateur. And, and I like that. I'm okay with that. 
I only do it because it's fun. If it wasn't fun, I wouldn't do it. That's it. Versus are you making money? That's what a professional would do. Am I making money? Am I exchanging value? We can have that value money conversation down the road. Uh, number three, is it organic growth versus strategic growth? Are you just kind of letting things happen willy-nilly? Or are you very deliberate and intentional about the growth that you're experiencing? Because professionals are deliberate and intentional. Uh, number four, are you trying to be minimally invested in this? What can I get away with? Or are you maximum invested? How much can I maximum invest into this thing? Because I know I'm going to get a return on it. And then number five, is it self-serving? That's amateur. And again, it's not, it has a negative connotation, self-serving. It's not negative. When I build boats, it's self-serving. I want to do it for me and my son, period, bottom line. I don't want to sell them. That's all I'm interested in right now. It's like, we have a good time doing it. And so it's self-serving versus a professional who then turns into serving others. How can I add to other people's lives? How can I contribute? What can I sell to other people to solve their problems? It's outward. It's, it's serving others versus serving yourself. Okay. All right, guys, that gives you some insight. That gives you some input. Let me know what you think. If you have some agreements, some disagreements, let me know. Make sure you're sharing this. Uh, for the month of September, we had the biggest download month we've ever had in the past six and a half years. That's a testament to you sharing, tagging, screenshotting, et cetera, et cetera. Keep doing that. Leave the ratings and reviews. Very, very important. And if you feel so inclined, learn to move from a successful amateur to a novice professional. All right, guys, that's all I've got for you today. We'll be back next week. Until then, go out there, take action, and become the man you are meant to be.